Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chris. This is David. And we're calling all geeks podcast. Today we have a guest, one of our friends. His name is Jonathan. Say hello. Hello, this is Jonathan. All right, so we're going to begin with our uh, topic of comics. I know in the main title we have, like, comics, you know, video games, and movies, but we hardly discussed about comics. So today David's going to talk about, you know, Spawn. I don't know that much. But yeah, here you go. All right, hey, guys. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about Spawn Origins, Volume 1, 2, and 3. Basically, it's a collection of of the earlier comics, the first issues. And um, I got to say, for anyone looking to uh, backtrack or just to read up on, on uh, where Spawn came from, I, it's highly suggested. There's uh, all sorts of goodies, such as you know, interviews... Uh, sketchings of uh, alternate hmm, of alternate covers so on and so forth and uh, yeah it it is really it's really good you can usually find these things find these for around 12 to 15 dollars on amazon.com they're also available in major book stores like at Barnes and Noble and Borders if there's if there's one around you uh, you guys have any questions I got to mention, if you're going to go to a comic store, go to Earth 2 Comics. There's two different locations, guys. There's one on Sherman Way and then the other one in Northridge. It's on Reseda. Really good comic store. I've been going there before it was called Earth 2. It used to be called Golden Apple, but yeah. Um, I know you guys are probably thinking, like, hey, what about you? Aren't you going to talk about comics, Chris? I'm like, Right now, I don't have anything. I'm going through so many different issues. I don't know what to start with, but uh, maybe on the next podcast, we'll have something else to talk about for comics-wise. But uh, David, do you have anything else on... Uh, Origins or any other comics? Uh, you said you read uh, Superman Unchained. How's that? Uh, it's a whole new Superman. I got to give it that. It's a little bit more real, more down to earth. It's it's hard to describe, honestly. The, Is it like the origins? It's not really the origins tale. It's more like how would Superman react in real life, basically. You know, in the old comic books, you know, he was this superhero, everyone adored him, all this stuff. This new one, there are people suspicious of him. They don't know, they don't truly know his motivations, and Superman, vice versa, doesn't really, really trust, you know, people in the military, so on and so forth. Uh, honestly, I can't wait to read the next issue. I, I've only read issue one, and uh, I don't think there's an issue two out yet. And I gotta say that it's like I, I, I'm actually looking forward towards the next issue. My only big gripe on a on a Superman Unchained is the fact that there's this big ridiculous poster in the middle of, uh, of, of the middle of the comic book. It kind of like it kind of takes away from the whole reading the comic book experience. But overall, I, overall, if you don't mind that, I guess it's something uh, I would really recommend any any Superman fan to actually start reading it. If you don't mind the big poster, that is. Yeah, that kept me from buying it. But you know what? Today I picked up, what is this? Uh, Batman and Superman, you know, together. No, no, it's a tag team thing. They used to do those more. It was like Batman, Superman, and a lot of uh, Jeb, Jeb Lowe used to do those. But uh, uh, I don't know. This one looks pretty promising. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that one, and I'll get back to you guys on that. But, uh, you know, our, our today are big we had two main topics besides the comics. We had to throw in that in there. But uh, I really want to talk about Konami. Konami, what's going on with Konami right now? I mean, like, I know we've seen the whole Metal Gear 5. But what else? What else do they have? They have, you know, they have Castlevania. They have Contra that I forget, like, they're neglecting. Frogger, I mean, you can give us a Frogger game. I mean, what else do we got for Konami, David? Oh, man. Uh, nothing much. I, I'm trying to think of upcoming Konami games, but nah. I mean, they already brought that out on the... Oh, we're talking about, like, the, the, the catalog. Yeah, the catalog. Oh, all right. Well, um, as, as far as I can remember, they had a lot of great arcade hits. Like, they've been slowly churning these out on Xbox Live. I'll put, I'll put up some footage. Of course, you got the original Contra. You got Scramble... You got, uh, of course, Frogger, yeah. Time Pilot, uh, the original Ninja Turtles. Hey, what's and up with that? Can they can they bring that game back? Because you know they brought it and it was pretty pretty horrible. 
Um, oh, you're talking about the Turtles in Time. Yeah, there we go. Uh, honestly, I don't know. I think you, Ubisoft owns the rights to make Ninja Turtle games. If, if it's going to come out, it has to be through Ubisoft. Uh, well, I don't know, but uh, I mean Konami for me. I mean I always love that company. Are you guys excited about Metal Gear coming out for? Uh, I don't know. Is it this year or next year? Yeah, I think it's next year. Next year. Yeah, um. So is anybody upset about David Hayter not like playing the voice of Snake anymore? Yeah, I gotta answer that. I I don't mind. I'm a big Twenty Four fan. I I love Kiefer Sutherland in a not in a gay way, <laughs> but you know I love him as an actor. Like how he port- how he portrays Jack Bauer, you know he's serious to the point, and I could really see Kiefer Sutherland playing as sol- you know uh, Naked Snake. I think when the first time I heard that new trailer that came out when uh, E3 was um, coming out, the I heard uh, Kiefer play as you know his. Snake's voice. I thought it sounded pretty good. Close to close to David Hayter, but a little different, a little more, a little more older, more mature. But I mean, we all grew up with David Hayter, and then hearing that is kind of a different take on me. But you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get used to it, and you you can't go wrong with Keeper Sutherland. Like I mean, I'm pr- I'm I'm just really excited about that game in general. For me, that's gonna be the game that I'm reason why I'm buying the PS4. But other than that, like Metal Gear is just we grew up on that. Like I remember playing the original one on the uh, on the Nintendo, and I know Hideo saying that that was like the worst one he made. He thinks the MSX version is better, the Japanese version is a lot better. I mean, I played that, yeah, it's a little better. It is better because the other one was so sloppy, so glitchy. And then like when I played uh, Metal Gear Solid, from there I just got hooked on it. I mean, like, do, you, do you, Jonathan, have you played any of the older Metal Gear games? Um, Metal Gear Solid um, Three. And I believe on um, MGS2. So, uh, what do you think about those? Like, personally, I love them because they had so much in depth, like in the stories, and it makes you feel like you you are these characters, you know. Yeah. And uh, so, did, so did you go like guns blazing or stealth? I did a little bit of both. <laughs> You know, there's sometimes I, I just got careless and just want to go um, guns and blazings, you know, and <laughs> if on, on the HD collection or like the, you played on the PS2. On the PS2. Classic. Yeah, yeah you know, classic. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I I shared this. I already shared this story with Chris before, but I guess I'll tell you all you guys. Uh, I originally played the original MGS one on the PlayStation one. It was a gift from my brother. And, uh, you know, I, I loved it. I think I played it maybe 30, 40 times. <laughs> and uh, and uh, eventually I let, you know, I let a friend borrow it. He lost it. I was pissed off. Um, I bought Twin Snakes as soon as I got a job. Because People still want to buy that game from you, Twin Snakes game. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm it, not it, keeping that. It's a good game. It's a good game. The voice acting is a little off because you could tell the actors were just re-repeating what they said before. Yeah, yeah. They had to, like... I remember reading something that they had to like re-record the audio because, you know, it, w- it, it was a higher quality audio. And uh, from there on forward, you know, I I, re- I remember, pl- I actually think I have the original NES copy somewhere around here. Oh man, you still got an NES copy of that? Yeah. Mine's all beat up, but I still have it. I mean, for me, it's nostalgia. I'm keeping that. My uh, cousin gave me that. He just didn't want his Nintendo no more, and he's like, hey, do you want some of these? And he kept the box, too. I mean, the box is kind of ratty, but I have the box, I have the the slip that comes in it, and the instruction manual. I'm keeping that. I mean, I'm, I just love Metal Gear. You know, I noticed that the cover of that is uh, a lot like the Reese from um, Terminator. Yeah. So they got that. <laughs> yeah, Kojima likes to rip off uh, yeah. movies. Not only that, uh, Escape, from the, um, Escape from New York. Escape from, I think it is from Escape from yeah, yeah. P- Snake Pliskins. All right, Jonathan has a uh, few things to say about that. Um, I think I heard that Kojima he wants to he want first he wanted to make um movies, but somehow I'm guessing it didn't work, and then that's how his his games and Jazz games look like movies. What do you guys think? Yeah. Well, you got to look at Metal Gear Solid Four. That looks like a whole, pretty much like a whole movie. It's all cutscene after cutscene after cutscene. You know, to me, it is a movie. It is a movie. You get really involved to, involved in the game. 
and you really care about the characters. Like, I think when the you know when I played Metal Gear Solid on the PS One, I remember when I you know killed Sniper Wolf and her just lying there and just giving me that whole story. Oh man, dude, I got like start tearing up there, man. You know, you you care about those characters, even when Ninja when uh he uh Gray Fox, yeah, when he when he died, I'm like, whoa. No, man, I care about these characters too much, especially on uh, Metal Gear 3, Snake Eater, uh, what's her name, Eva? Eva. Eva, I like her. You know, Sna Snake was just trying to get it on the whole time with her. <laughs> yeah, but um, I love Metal Gear, and I'm just waiting for Metal Gear 4. Another thing, if in a, I'm sorry, five. let me retract that, 5, Phantom, oh, what is it, Ground Zeroes and uh, Phantom Pain, yeah. But uh, if you if anybody has like the PS3, you know you can look forward to the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection that has Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2: Snakes Revenge, um, has Metal Gear 3, that has Metal Gear Solid. No, Metal Gear the way the because it's kind of a weird chrono chronological order. The way it really goes, it's uh, it's it's Snake Eater, it's Peace Walker, then it's um. No, no, it's Metal Gear Solid 3, then it's Peace Walker, then it's, and then it's Metal Gear 5, Phantom Pain, and then it goes to Metal Gear, wait, we, I keep forgetting about uh, Metal Gear, yeah, Portable Oz, but you know what, did anybody really play these games as much? Yes. Okay, I, you know what, Dave, enlightened me, I do not know anything about the Portable Oz games, because I never had the PSP. All right, man, it's been such a long time, um... It takes place between, you know, it takes place after Snake Eater, from what I understand. And uh, the government's freaked out because Russia has a base somewhere in Colombia and they can launch a nuclear missile. So, uh, is the, gameplay like the, the, the gameplay is a lot like the original. Um, it's basically like Snake Eater, but the graphics have been toned down. There's not as many polygons. There's I, I think that's Metal Gear Acid. Was that good? I never played it. It's uh, it's it's a card game basically. It's way out of left field. I heard it was good, but uh, you know, King I. King of Fighters made a card game. Yeah, the the, the card game there was really good, but that's a whole different story. That's a whole different <laughs> show. That's a whole different show. But yeah, it plays yeah it plays a lot like um, Metal Gear Solid Three. The main thing though is you had to recruit. Uh, you know Russian soldiers to help you out. Like, if you find an officer, it's a bit, it's a good idea to get the officer, kidnap him, trying to convince him to join your side, so it could give you access to like areas, uh, out other areas, and give you info. Like, yeah, this is this is what time the security detail comes. You better come at this time. You know, and so on and so forth. And they actually help you out. You can actually switch between in and out of uh, characters. I think you could like play as certain officers to get access. Yeah, you could play as officers on the base to get access to certain areas. And that's how it basically progresses. You just recruit mem team members and you know and eventually find fight uh you know a giant robot. I think it's I think it's like the first iteration of Metal Gear you fight in in that game. Not really a smaller version. It kind of looks like the Metal Gear Ray. Metal Gear Ray. If I remember right, uh, I'm probably going to have to play through the game again. I have, I have a question. Did, did RoboCop come out before Metal Gear or Metal Gear came out before RoboCop? Because remember that one little ro that one robot in RoboCop? Doesn't it remind you of the Metal Gear in a way? Honestly, I don't know. I don't remember playing. <laughs> I don't remember playing... Uh, Oh, I don't remember seeing uh, Metal Gear like Robot and Robocop. Well, the movie, not the game. Oh. Remember that one robot that, that goes crazy and shoots it like... Oh, you mean the, the ED-1? Yeah, doesn't that look kind of like a Metal Gear in a sense? Do you think Kojima got like a little bit of inspiration from that? You know what? Uh, giant robots like that have been around since yeah. since Battle, <laughs> Battle Mech. Battle Mech? Yeah, you, you know Mech Warrior and... Yeah. Yeah, that... That, that series has been around a long time, so if anything, he might have gotten it from that. Well, Kojima's mind is everywhere with the whole trolling on us, making us think that it, Phantom Pain was not a Metal Gear, but we know. 
that's a Metal Gear game. What else is he going to do? Maybe if he makes another Zona Enders game, but that'll be a while. But I think this is his last Metal Gear game after that because after Metal Gear 5, it's going to tie into Metal Gear. He said that for the... He said, he's been saying that for a long time. Well, what else can he make after that? He wants to make a movie. Let him make a movie. Well, yeah, I want a movie. Of course I want a movie, but you think he'll make another video game? Maybe a remake. Maybe another remake how we got like Twin Snakes. We can get that. It, it, if he's gonna make, if he has to make another game, let him finish Snatcher because uh, I know a lot of people that have been waiting for a sna- for a new Snatcher. Yeah, I'm waiting for a new Snatcher. You guys don't know what Snatcher is. I do, do you? not know what Snatcher is. Oh, you don't know what Snatcher is? No. Oh my God. It's the first. All right, all right. Um, th- this has to. This is kind of Konami themed. Uh, yeah. Well, all right. We gotta talk about S- Pennsylvania. Snatcher is a uh, is basically a point and click adventure game. Um, you you play as a detective. Uh, Snatcher. Yeah, Snatchers are basically ro- robot duplicates of of people. Basically, uh, a guy I don't know, mad scientist or something. Spoiler alert, is um is replacing very powerful people with robots so he could control the city. And it's your job as the detective to find out how how it's being done. You investigate. You you talk to people. You pick up clues. It's a it's a it's a basic point point and click adventure game. But the story is like totally awesome. Um, it was only released in the United States on the Sega CD. I've been looking for a copy myself, but it costs like over three hundred bucks. Forget that. But yeah, forget that. F that noise, that's what I say. But uh, so yeah, Metal Gear. But another great game that I that you know that I saw at E3, and that I saw on the live stream was Castlevania. And this is when uh, uh, Gabriel, ba- uh, I'm sorry, Gabriel Belmont becomes Dracula. Right, because the last one where it's just like he, it just like he was more just trying to help out the Belmonts. But this is where he actually becomes Dracula. Because I, I mean, from what I saw from the trailer, he's actually biting people and you can actually bite people in the game now so will this in- introduce like a la carte coming up pretty soon or do you anything about that um when i first heard of the lord of shadow series i took it as another a whole different it's like a hack and slash well not really a hack and slash it's more like it's a di- it's a whole different series from the main series they finished the main series on the nintendo ds with uh, dawn of sorrow well, Jack, Dracula's already been dead, and there are people trying to find a new replacement. Um, the Belmont family no longer has power because there's no longer a reason to. And I think the Lords of Shadow Two is a it's a departure. It's a whole different it's a whole different story. How does this, is it like prequel wise? Lords of Shadow. Lords of Shadow, from what I understand, is a whole different story. It's it's not really a prequel or a sequel. It's it's a whole different Castlevania series, kind of like how Metal Gear Acid is a whole different series from Metal Gear. But it, but should those tie into the series too? I mean, uh, it does not tie in into into the main series at all. Is it no. kind of like the new? Is it kind of like the Devil May Cry reboot, the DMC? I would say so. Yeah, it's like a reboot. Yeah, a fresh reboot, it fresh shit. Okay. Well, I mean, it looks good. But can they still put in like Alucard in there, even though it's kind of? I mean, it still has the Belmont name. Can they still add Alucard? In there? I'm pretty sure. Sh- are they calling him Dracula at this point? Yeah, he's already Dracula. Uh, but well, I mean, he, he, are, are they he, calling him Dracula? No, he's still Gabriel, but then he uh, he transforms to Dracula this at this game. At some point, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. At this point, I they could probably put in Alucard and maybe progress a whole different story, like how he resents his father or something. All right. Um, but uh. Yeah. But yeah, the, from what I from my my take is a whole new uh, a whole new reboot, a whole new uh, story involving uh, you know involving the Castlevania Castlevania name mainly. Yeah. Well, I guess John has a little bit of info on that too as well. I believe Alucard does come on because I don't know if you guys seen um the first um CG trailer that shows um Dracula. The Castlevania too. Yeah, Lord Dra- of Shadow. Lords of Shadow. Yeah. You can see um Dracula fighting all these um soldiers and out of nowhere he like turns around and sees like some white haired long guy with s- with a s- with a sword yeah. and then 
you could see like his face on the reflection of his sword and I'm guessing that's Alucard but I don't know I could be wrong I remember seeing that trailer that's the first one when they first announced Lords of Shadow 2 but then there's a new trailer out I mean I I didn't see anything of Alucard on that one I just show it just shows uh Gabriel just kind of transforming into the whole the whole Dracula scene now but yeah I assume it's Alucard because you know he he mostly uses swords right and I saw the guy just pull out a sword, and, and I'm assuming it's it's him. Wow, well, to me that's my favorite character. I mean, Richter's cool. Richter's cool. I mean, I love playing uh, uh Lord. Uh, sorry, uh, Symphony of the Night. Really good. What what's that name that they gave it? Really uh, can there we go, Metroidvania. <laughs> but for me, I love Super Castlevania. Can't go wrong with that game. Super awesome. I love the soundtrack. Just everything about over the top about Castlevania games. I love. But uh, you know what I'm just noticing right now? Is this a new microphone, David? Actually, I have that in my closet. <laughs> All right. It's we're really sensitive, so we could be careful when we pass it around. I guess we're upgrading the equipment now. We should just be getting better equipment <laughs> later. Little, li- l- sorry. Little by little, trying to save money for that right now. But filter on that thing because I know yeah. picking up the air conditioning. Yeah, we're just rec- right now we're recording in David's room, so there's like a fan going on. And uh, it's Come probably... Lot, yeah. Super raw right now, guys. But... uh. All right, I guess the next thing we're talking about is Survivor Horror, and that's why we have uh, John here. We, we missed out on Contra, though. Contra? All right, hold on. Let's uh, retract that. I don't know that much about Contra. I know this guy knows so much about it, so he's going to talk about that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, uh, I'm going to put up footage of the various Contra games I own. Um, how can you not know about Contra? So you never play the Super Nintendo one? No. You never play the Genesis one? No. You never play Shadow Soldier on no. the PS2? Well, let me borrow one then. <laughs> uh, do you have a Genesis? I'll let you borrow the Genesis. Genesis. No. All right. Do you have a Super Nintendo? No. You don't have a Super Nintendo? No, not right now. <laughs> do you have a PS2 though, right? I have a PS2. I'll let you borrow the old Contra. How's that sound? All right, go for it. But, oh my God, I can't believe it. All right. Contra is a run and gun, very difficult shooter. John, did you play Contra? All right, all right. You, then uh, me and him probably have something in common. Okay. Now, you would agree Contra is really hard, right? It is very hard. Have you passed any of them? Just the first level. <laughs> oh. Have you played more than one Contra? Um, I believe so. I'm not, I'm not sure. He- oh, I guess I'm, I'm alone on this one then. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Contra. Well, as I said before, Contra's a run-and-gun, shoot 'em up series. They've been known to be really difficult. And I don't think they have anything coming up, do they? You didn't see anything at E3? Nothing at E3, but I think they're porting over some games on uh, XBLA and uh, PSN. Yeah, because the last thing they brought out was Hard Corps, which is kind of a sequel to the one on the I Genesis. Hard, man. Oh, it's fun. It's fun, but hard. It's like just over the top. I like it. And... I'm still looking for my. Oh, there it is. I'm just browsing through your games, my friend. Bra- browsing, my, browsing through my games. Anyway, I'll, uh, you, you must know about up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, oh, A, yeah, start. I don't know that. That's, uh, like, that's like Contra. I'm sorry, that's like Konami's freaking slogan. Okay, before we, all, before we all leave, we're going to have to play Contra. You got that? Oh, we could do that. I'm down. All right. <laughs> and it's an awesome series. I'm, I'm kind of sad that nothing new is coming up. So what David trying to say is, please give us uh, something to Contra. Give us an HD yeah. remix. I guess Hard Corps. Hard Corps is badass. Badass. Give but us another one of those. Give us something else like that. Maybe not 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 downloadable. Give us an actual like game game based game like an on a disc. You know, like a new engine something. You know, give us something. Guys. Well, to be fair, Contra games once you know how to beat them, they're kind of short. Um, I would like to see a uh, a three a three DS reboot version. There you go, at least a three DS or a Vita, a Vita. There's yes. nothing for place for PS right now. Vita. Yeah, p- put put a Contra on the Vita. I I got this thing. There's no good games. I've I've been playing PlayStation One games on my Vita all, all, you know, all for the past three months. No wait, there's good games coming out. There's uh Miramusa. Uh, well, it's not a new game, Mar- uh, Maramusa, which is uh on the Wii, but it's uh ported over to the. Vita looks awesome, and then there's Dragon's Crown, which I'm excited about. I mean, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, the whole uh, mo- like kind of like four players, hack and slash, 
you know, you got your wizards, your mage, your sorcerer, you know. That, you could look forward to that on the Vita. I'm getting that. Okay, enough about Contra, but uh, let, let's go on to Survival Horror. Survival Horror. So what's going on with Survival Horror right now? I mean, like, for me, I'm waiting for the evil within. And uh, that's why we have Jonathan here. He wants to discuss about the main thing is, uh, I guess, zombies. You know, pretty much it is Survival Horror, but he's pretty much addicted on uh, State of Decay. Uh, yes, I am. Um, I don't know how many hours I put on State of Decay. It's just so addicting. I mean, I'm pretty sure all of us have been looking for a game like this. Like, we ha we have to survive, collect um, items in order to survive. As and Well, I mean, I, I like State of Decay, but that whole permadeath kills me, man. I already, that one guy, Marcus, that I started out in the beginning, I got killed twice with that guy. So I just keep going. But you know what? The game is cool, but I, I like an old school survivor kind of horror game. Like, I love my whole Resident Evil games. I love Re Resident Evil 2 is my favorite. I know a lot of people are like, what? 4 is probably the better one. But 2 is just clunky. I love the camera angles. Just the whole two-player thing where you play as either Claire first or you want to play as Leon first. You basically have to play the game four times over to get the whole experience. Yeah, the whole experience, the real endings, because there's like different endings towards it. But if you play as Leon first, and you and then you play, then you play as Claire, then that one guy is chasing you around. Uh, the tyrant. The tyrant. Yeah, that guy's a pain in the ass. He just pops out of the win uh, out of like the anywhere, the ceiling, the walls. I mean, to me, two is my favorite, and that's why I'm excited about the Evil Within because it's uh, Shinji Mikami, and the creator of uh, Resident Evil and the creator of Survivor. Horror is bringing back the roots. Um, I didn't see that at E3 because Bethesda had like closed doors on that. They always have like only media or press checking out the games. But from what I saw on IGN, like the uh, live demo, it looks really good. It reminds me of 4 but with different elements, you know. But other than that, like did uh, Resident Evil 6 disappoint any of you guys? For me, uh... Yes and no. I mean, I love the story because it involves, like, everyone else, like, in the end, like, coming together, you know. And the the game, the game gameplay, I don't know. Was it clunky? Was it, is it, like, Resident Evil 4 gameplay or is it different? I mean, to me, it seemed a little more stiff, like, the mechanics of it. I did, like, the whole when you, like, um, when you kind of slide. The duck and cover, I think they had to tweak that. It's kind of, it seems stiff on that. Like, sometimes when you try to cover, it wouldn't cover or you're just getting shot. But it was a good game. It, it, I guess it was overhyped when it came out. But, I mean, I love it. And then there's Dead Space. I think that's dead already. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I love the first one. The second one was okay. The third one was just, like, it lost its element. It added co-op to it. I'm done with Dead Space. If you think about it, there's not that many more uh, reoccurring survival horror games. I think we just got, what, Evil Within coming out next year? I mean, uh, there's I think there's another game on PC. I think it's called Dying Light. It, it kind of reminds me of, like, Amnesia. Have you guys played that one? No. It's that whole, like, when you're stuck in a castle or, like, dungeons and you got no weapons. You got to find your way out of there. But that looks cool. But, uh... I don't know. What else? I mean, like, I, I remember playing, like, Alone in the Dark. I used to love that game. That's the old classic survival horror game. I remember playing, or I, I think I remember seeing that on the Sega Saturn. I'm not too sure. It was, it is considered the first survival horror from what I understand. Um, was it more of a point and clink adventure type thing, or what, did you actually have to move your character around? You moved your character around. But I remember before that, I remember uh, Clock Tower? That's an old survivor horror game where it was point and click. Oh. That one. That was on the Super Nintendo, right? If you want to go with survivor horror, would you say would you consider Doom as being a survivor horror game? I I would say no because that one of the main ideas of survival horror is you have a limited supply of everything. You, in Doom, they give you everything you could find the bft 1000 clear an entire room out of zombies and monsters um i guess it's maybe a little survival horror like in the first level because you only have the pistol but it, once you it, get it has the elements of it right well yeah it has elements of like yeah monsters spooky uh it has a spooky atmosphere 
but a true survival horror game ha- limits the player so much. For example, like Resident Evil, it has that, like you said, the clunky, clunky controls and, and such a limited supply of ammunition. You gotta, you have to pre-plan where you're gonna, where you're gonna go. And um, yeah, and Doom does not have does not have that kind of uh, aspect. Doom three, maybe I would say so. Doom three, because yeah. you have to use a flashlight. It is limiting the player somewhat, but no, nah, I, I don't think Doom, Doom is a is sort of a horror game. You know what game I would like to see back? Fatal Frame. That game scared the shit out of me. Yeah, with those little two little Asian girls snapping pictures. That game is yeah, that game is pretty freaky, man. Bring back that game. Fatal Frame was awesome. Uh, I remember the original Resident Evil back in the day scared the shit out of me. Like I remember my cousin playing it, dude. This game is just scary, dude. I remember just like the whole like zombies popping out of the closet, and then the whole tyrant thing was just. Yeah, dude, that, dude, that part when the dogs popped out of the window, you're like, holy shit, shit just got real right there, dude. I, I love Resident Evil, man. Uh, It's all right, man. I mean, forewarn all of you guys with the language, but yeah. So, Jonathan, what would you say is your favorite survivor horror game? It can be current gen or whatever you're excited about coming out for next gen or even whatever, any kind of game you think you should just love playing, like survivor horror theme, yeah, that is. Um, that's a tough one because there's so many good ones out there. Um, I think right now it's the state of the K one right now, <laughs> cause there are many others like it. Like for example, well, I'm not sure if they're like the same thing, but Daisy and War Z. But War Z, I don't know if you guys noticed, they changed their name to Infestation because of the because of the movie. The movie? Yeah, yeah, they had to change it because you know copyright issues. And War Z, well, Infestation, it's just, uh, it, there was so much hype on that game. And when, so glitchy, I bet. Yeah, it was so glitchy, so many modders. That game is just, like, horrible. Like, and um, DayZ, well, they're having a standalone game right now. And I saw some footage, but it has some potential. But it's just me, you know. From what I saw from DayZ, it looks really good. Uh, it's the same people from Arma, right? Yeah, but the thing is, I remember seeing Daisy. It should be the same thing. Arma is making Daisy. It's yeah, it's like a mod. Arma's letting um, what's his name? They're um they're letting him use like their engine of Arma three, and to make this game. You know? Yeah, but I think the least thing you worry about in that game, Daisy, is the zombies, just because there's people, pretty much like uh, be- befriending you in the game. They'll be your friends. And they'll shoot you and take all your equipment, and then you'll start from a different location. That's what I, from what I seen on YouTube um, footage. That's all I see. I mean, yeah, the zombies are there. They kind of remind me of the zombies of uh, State of Decay, but these seem more rabid. They run at you. But not to say that State of Decay is not glitchy. That thing is super glitchy too <laughs> right now. You know, there's you get stuck like on a rock. You get stuck on a log. There's a bunch of stuff that goes on in the game. I mean, I like it. I like. It. I just don't like the whole permadeath thing. I wish I had like the whole uh, thing, like in Fire Emblem, it has like the uh, option to have permadeath, and then it has the option to every time you save or every time you pass a certain checkpoint, the character comes up. And also on State of Decay, when you're not playing, the game still continues. Like your characters will live on their own life, and they'll use like the the supplies that you gathered. So that's kind of like an issue because sometimes I have like 50 food items and when I come back from like from work, at the food items is like 40 or, or 35 and I have to go out and collect more items and that's that's kind of annoying sometimes. But rather than that, it's pretty good. Pretty good. And also... And also, I heard that they want to do a, a multiplayer version of State Decay, but they haven't um, gotten the go yet because, you know, E3 just passed. Uh, their their developers have been all busy with, with that. And hopefully by the next month, they'll start with the multiplayer version of it. And we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that's the one thing that the State of Decay is really missing is the whole buddy buddy system you know like my friends that help me out before i'm getting raped by all these zombies 
but yeah, dude, th- I mean, it's been fun. I love playing that game, but uh, I think we're out of time now, guys, and we're just going to end it like that, and uh, I'm glad that John came out here. So I don't know. John, would you want to be here at our next podcast? Definitely. This sounds fun. Cool. I guess we'll have different discussions going on. Maybe movies. We need to put in movie elements in there. So uh, this is Chris. This is David. And this is Jonathan. And we're signing out. See you guys.